there's that old Jeep I had. Look back to the days gone by. <laughs> Photos behind me. Give me something to look at besides this old man down here in Alabama. Anyway, this morning I'd like to talk about this uh this uh text in the Bible. This text that at one time in my life was a letter that kills. I like to expound on it. It's about it's called the the cheerful cheerful giver text. The cheerful giver text. I can't hardly say that. God loves the cheerful giver. <coughs> text. Uh, by the way, it's a funny thing that uh the only, you know, a lot of these supposed preachers out there that you see <laughs> every time you turn around, this only law that they'll bring over into the New Testament, they'll holler, uh, we're under grace, 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 but then they bring this law over into the New Testament and try to compel people to uh, keep this uh, particular law. <laughs> well, and it's tithing. One-tenth of your uh, salary should be given to them. Or <laughs> they, they always give you their address when, when they invoke this upon the, uh, God's people, when they put it on their, their bags, you know. But uh, this tithe, brothers and sisters. Anyway, I'd like to talk about it on my, this little video. Because there might be somebody out there that hadn't crossed this bridge. You know, they see it, you know, they hear the preachers, will a man rob God? Will a man rob God, you know? They'll put the child of grace under some kind of bondage to uh, come up with 10% of their salary, even though they're juggling everything to uh, to make ends meet. Uh, they take uh, uh, take uh, take away from their own family. To uh, and they, But the thing about it is, it winds up going to the... Uh, to the uh, these posers that call themselves preachers. And uh, I just want to expound on it and tell you, brothers and sisters, that we're not under this uh, uh, tithing. Uh, it's not in the New Testament, and then it can't be found. First thing I did when I started looking, I got me a concordance, I looked at it, concordance. When I was confronted with this, back way back in my 20s, uh, it says that the... the uh, Apostles, let's see, the New Testament, neither his apostles, neither our Lord had commanded anything on the the uh, the uh, subject of tithing. Why would that be, brothers and sisters? Because it's free grace, brothers and sisters. There's no, uh, and this is the one thing that will always be brought over. If you ever were in a particular, uh, uh, unite or, or start fellowshipping with some uh, other believers, and then, and then and this comes up and they start uh, talking about it well you, you need to find the over but anyway that would be my uh, advice because you know if they're wrong on this they're going to be wrong on everything else no brothers and sisters uh, if you want to give to god my view <laughs> when i first heard this i went uh, uh well i'll tell you the story behind it when we were in this little uh I don't know if it's a prayer group or it was the Bible study, but uh, what happened was uh, uh, one person began to be the leader of this uh, prayer group or Bible study, and we was, you know, it was just a we meet at a, different, at a house or something like that, different people's houses, and uh, it was a nice little thing in town there, brother and sister. Then one of them said, well, they decided to have a church. <laughs> that was the big, uh, and then one of them uh, took the lead. One man took the lead. And then that one man quit his job. <laughs> and the next thing you know, uh, uh, there was, you know, the prayer group or the Bible study turned into a, a supposed church. But um, I was always the one that would open up a can of worms <laughs> at the Bible study. And I was always the one to ask questions. They, in fact, that's where I got, every time I'd ask a question, they'd, they'd kind of give a little remark like, well, that's Doug O'Bear. Open up a can of worms. 
one time I asked about the, uh, uh, hey, what about this Jacob 11 Esau he hated text there? <laughs> and, and, and they didn't like that. But uh, anyway, uh, but anyway, what happened was this, brother and sister. I received a letter after uh, we'd been going, you know, to this uh, little fellowship for a few months. Well, and, and we received a letter that said, everybody that's a member of this particular order will uh, tithe off of, this, off of the gross of the sour, not uh, the gross, not the net of the sour. Not after Uncle Sam got here, they'll tithe off of it. That'll be a requirement. Wow, I was really uh, taken back <laughs> by that. And uh, because it, what it taught, started out to be a nice little thing, fellow done quit his job and uh, was going to make a living off of uh, <laughs> the poor uh, cotton mill workers that, were, that went there. There was just a handful of them. But a lot of people don't want to work. They want to get, they want to, uh, uh, make their living off of uh, God's people, you know. So uh, anyway, I'm not saying that this particular fellow, was, I believe he was a child of grace, but he was just uh, wrong on this matter. But of course he was wrong on everything else, but this particular matter he was showing up wrong because they sent out a letter. said everybody will have to be, have to tithe if they're going to be a member of this, of this particular church, or supposed church. So, uh, Wow, they'd get out. They'd go off on a fellowship on a retreat <laughs> down on the beach, and we'd go to the cotton mill and work, and we, and that was going to be the thing. So I didn't do it. I went down. And, uh, I, I still tried to tithe. <laughs> I I was still holding on to the tithe thing. I would the tithe thing. What I would do was I wouldn't give it to them. I said, "Well, I, the Lord said give it to the poor." So I I'd go get some groceries and. Uh, and uh, go down to the poor side of town and, and give it, give that some groceries to the uh, people that were less fortunate than me, brothers and sisters. That's the way I would do it. I wouldn't give it to them. <laughs> I was a real rebel. But uh, anyway, uh, I wouldn't do that. I wouldn't do that. But anyway, I got to looking at it because all this time I said, well, maybe that's, that's right, you know. No, but then I, I talked to this old man down where my work, and he pointed to me to this... Uh, this text because he'd already been through it before to himself and it says uh this is the only time in the new testament when paul even talks about giving uh and it's he's really he's taking up an offering for the poor uh he's taking up this uh it's not a, it's not an offering but it's an uh, they were helping out somewhere else you know some some people that were really down in the and this was in second corinthians 9 it says Every man according as he purposed in his heart, so let him give, not grudgingly or of necessity, for the Lord loves a cheerful giver. See, brothers and sisters, the cheerful giver or of necessity, you catch that? Or under compulsion or arm twisting. See, uh, in the New Testament, uh, and they'll use this very text to try to uh, try to make you, for the Lord loves a cheerful giver. Here, give it to me. Uh, give your money to me and like it. You know, if you don't like it, that ain't right. You're supposed to like it because, see, I'm a, uh, you know, I'm a man of God. Or, you know, give it to me. They always give you their address. No, brothers and sisters, the cheerful giver goes out the window when the compulsion, when the child of grace, it says, or of necessity. It's not even a necessity. This, this great need that they had here, I think it was in Jerusalem, this great need that they have, when taking up the offering, Paul instructed them to not only make it a necessity. If, if they if, if they don't want to give, don't uh, compel them to give. But they, that was one time that you see in the New Testament they took up an offering. And this was not uh, tithing because the, when that's the reason it's not even mentioned in the New Testament, brothers and sisters. Anyway, uh, I didn't know that. <laughs> but that, that man, that wiser man that it worked with, that God put there in the cotton mill next to me, <laughs> right where, where I was working. Uh, inform me on this because he'd already been through it before too. So, oh, brothers and sisters, some men they don't want to work; they want to live off of God's people. And I'm not going to say they're not children of grace because they got breath to this very day. God puts breath in their body; they just been tricked by somebody else. No, this is not brought over into the New Testament, brothers and sisters. 
is added to by men, by these supposed wise men that uh, think they know it all. Well, no, brother sister, that wouldn't be free grace, you know. Oh, I got to come up with this. Every time you, uh, every time you uh, reach in your pocket, you got to set a dime aside to uh, and find somewhere to put it. Besides that, they always give you their address, and they always put themselves up there. You know, that's where it goes. You know, that's where the money goes. I tell you what, uh, I do to this day. It goes to the less to uh, the poor. <laughs> Somebody poorer than me, which is hard to find. <laughs> and, but anyway. Just want to uh, come on here and rant a little bit about the. Don't worry about the. Don't wor worry about the uh, New Testament tithe, but sister, all that is nailed to his cross. Uh, you follow the lead of the Holy Spirit, wherever He says give, give, and when, and uh, that's how you give in the New Testament. It doesn't have to be necessarily money either. You know, waste your time or anything else. But uh, not grudgingly or of necessity. Not even necessity. Anytime somebody's twisting your arm about money, give it to them. Uh, uh, find the door. That's what I'm trying to tell you down here in Alabama. Not grudgingly or of necessity, for the Lord loves a cheerful giver. How many times have you ever heard that? I have. You mean you're not a cheerful by giving to me so I can take off down to Florida and go on a retreat? <laughs> With my and we can sit around and talk about God, and, and while we're uh, uh, sitting out there and, uh, and enjoying themselves, no, brother and sister, I'm just telling you, that's the way it goes. That's why there's so many people that are turned off about religion in America. But I'm going to tell you, brother and sister, there is a God in heaven, uh, regardless of how poorly He is represented by men down here below. That's my uh, little thing on today, <laughs> my little rant <laughs> on uh, cheerful giving. The Lord loves a cheerful giver. Would a man rob God? They read you that too. Will a man rob God? Here, send him your money because God needs it. God needs your money real bad. <laughs> no, he don't, brother and sisters. He don't need my little money. Uh, <laughs> and anyway, I just want to... Uh, Expound on this little text here. For the Lord loves a cheerful giver. It says, Every man according as he purposes in his heart. It's in heart. In other words, you get it in your heart how you want to go. If it touches you, you know, you want to give this person something and your heart is speaking toward it, you give it to him. But it's not, this is not, this is Paul talking here. This is the only time you see it in the New Testament and he's taking up a, a, a need that they had. But uh, what you're seeing going on now, little brothers and sisters, is law-keeping. When you hear that at a particular order, anywhere you're at, give to this, give to that. God doesn't need anything, brothers and sisters. His Holy Spirit, like the wind, can blow your way without uh, without the need of a, a tithing. Tithing is not in the New Testament. The New Testament, neither his disciples, neither our Lord, has commanded anything on the issue of tithing. Anyway, that's just a little short one. I've seen people on the internet go into big, long uh, things. I'm just saying, out of experience. Of course, that was the end of that particular order. <laughs> we were gone from that place, and so were a lot of other people after they brought that up because they know that when you give to God, it ought to be from the heart, a cheerful giver. And the cheerful giver goes out the window when people compel you and, tell you and twist your arm and make it of a necessity to give to this particular uh, need, supposed need. Peace and love from this old boy down here in Alabama.